So today I would like to <coughs> lecture about how can we selecting soil models and parameter calibration in Myra GTX NX. My name is Sompo Chuwai. I am associate professor at King Mongkut University of Technology Chonburi. The content of my lecture today composed of six topics. The first one I will talking about what is the fundamental of quantitative model. What is the quantitative model? Why we have to use it? What is the? And also I will talking about the linear elastic model. What is the linear elastic? What is the model parameter? And after linear elastic, we go to more advanced. We 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 will simulate the yield of the soil, simulate the plasticity of the soil. We're talking about elastic plastic. And after elastic plastic, we go to advanced model with the hardening model. In my DAS, they have the my DAS GTX NX. They have a lot of model that that can simulate the hardening behavior, softening behavior of the soil. And the the next part, I will talking about the soil test. How can we use the soil test in my DAS GTX NX? The soil test in my DAS is quite flexible and it's quite easy to use. And after we before we perform full numerical analysis, we have to conduct the soil test to 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 verify that our parameter is, is suitable or not for simulate the real soil behavior. And the last part of my lecture, I will talking about the <coughs> case study. How can we we using the soil test for simulate behavior of soil cement cemented soil? And how can we use the advanced model to simulate the behavior of the wall that excavated in the river or is a, some kind of, of the river wall? So <coughs> let's start for the first part. The first part today, I will be talking about fundamental of quantitative model. So what is the quantitative model? The quantitative model is the relationship between the stress and strain. The notation here we always have the matrix. The notation if is the matrix C is the quantitative model. For example, if we have the y axis is the deviatoric stress, is the sigma one minus sigma three, like that, and is the strain. We have to find the function that can fit this curve. Can fit should be something like this and curve like this. <coughs> if the quantity model is, is 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 good or suitable, this can fit this one very well. The the easy quantity model that people that our engineer know about it is elastic model. You can make this quantity model to be easy way just the relationship between the stress and strain. Maybe we can draw the line here. Okay, so if we let's set the relationship between Thread and strain as linear, so we can have our first quantity model is sigma one minus sigma three equal to e i time thread. So e i here is quantity model. Or or if we back back to this point and we unload it here. We can change from EI to be EUR or E unload. This one can be defined as a quantitative model also for unloading. But in the real world, it's not like that. The straight condition in real world is not easy like that 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 that, that I talked to you. They have a lot of Mm. stress that in one phase 
they have three components they have the shear in this way shear in the other way and you will have the normal component so that means every phase they have about three component of stress acting on it's not the same as I show you for, for previous slide it have only maybe sigma 1 and sigma 3 but this one have about <coughs> three components so that means if we would like to simulate this one is the whole whole continuum problem we have to use the more complicated metric to simulate it for linear elastic it should be something like this they have if if you're not familiar with this one you will think that this one is quite complicated but this one is quite easy the this one is stressed and this one is metric of the strain from this case you can see that we have only two parameters one is e and the other parameter is so Poisson ratio you can see is e and Poisson ratio all of, of component the e and Poisson ratio so that means if you would like to use linear elastic model it's required only two parameters is e and Poisson ratio and if you input the e and Poisson ratio it can construct the constant metric here and you can input the E and Poisson ratio in the program and, and the program will establish this metric by itself and can calculate the strain for you quite straightforward how how to obtain value of E <coughs> the E or elastic modulus we can we have three ways to, to, to get it the first one we can get it from laboratory or we can get from field test or we can get from the calculate from the strength of soil from lab is quite straightforward <coughs> if we have the soil sample and you compress it This one is this one so called unconfined compression test. Unconfined compression test, and we plot same curve that I showed you before is the y axis is sigma 1 minus sigma 3, and the x axis is straight. For unconfined compression test, this portion become 0. You can get the E from this test. E at the initial point is called EI. Okay, and if if the failure is around here, maybe it's the failure. The failure around here, we use a half of the failure and we draw this, this line so called E50 or is the E at the second modulus from at the 50% of the failure condition of the soil or we have E tangent. <coughs> you may have the problem is that what the E that we will use for analysis. I have a a is it it is rule of thumb is quite straightforward. I have to say that E value is depend on the strain range that you would like to use. If the your strain range is maybe really small here, you can use EI. If the strain range maybe is really large, okay, if it is really large, maybe you can use it E at the failure. Or if you don't know the strain range, you can use the average E. Average E that I always use for my analysis, I use the E50. is a second modulus as about half of the failure stress of the soil. I 
oxalate is as the E15. So that means if you have the lab for unconfined combustion test, you can pick up the value of E quite easy. And so on, you have the other you, you have the other parameter is so called Poisson ratio. How can you get the Poisson ratio? The Poisson ratio, the definition of Poisson ratio is that is the ratio between if you apply the stress to your soil, this one is compressed as theta L palm and expansion equal to theta L here. The Poisson ratio is the ratio between the compression to the extension is different size so we have to add the minus actually when we test for the soil the, the Poisson ratio is not constant it's always changed but but they have to say it's, magic, uh, it's a magic number of average for the analysis in element of the soil we we they have the research they have the literature that they recommend that we approximately the Poisson ratio is about 0.3 so at th this point, you can maybe let, let's say make conclusion. You get E from unconfined or from F, and you obtain a little Poisson ratio. Also, if equal to 0.3, you can calculate for it. And if you have the <coughs> result from dry cell test. Dry cell test is something like this. You have the sigma one and sigma three and sigma two. Condition for dry cell is sigma two equal to sigma three. It's called axis symmetry. If in axis symmetry, when the <coughs> when the result from from the lab, when you send the soil to test for the lab laboratory they will give the definition for stress to let easy to understand in axis symmetric condition if they will plot in Q Q is equal to the deviate deviatory stress is the sigma 1 minus sigma 3 P is deviatory P is the mean stress mean is sigma 1 plus 2 sigma 3 over 3 is the mean stress and distortion of strain is 2 over 3 epsilon 1 minus epsilon 3 and this one is the volumetric strain if volumetric strain is Epsilon 1 plus 2, Epsilon 3 over 3. Oh, sorry, this one is wrong. No, no, 3. Epsilon 1 plus 2, Epsilon 3 without any kind of mean. Okay, this one, if if you have the results in dry Excel, they, they always plot something like this. If, if they plot something like this, the graph, <coughs> you can obtain the value of the, the other version of parameter is k and g k is bow modulus g is <coughs> shear modulus if for <coughs> if for axis symmetry condition you can it plot between Q and Epsilon S you draw this line the slope of this line is 3G and the slope of this line between the vol volumetric strain and distortion strain is the GOK so that means if you get the value of G, you subtract this value into this equation. Sorry, this equation here. You can obtain the value of K. In GTS NX, 
you just change the alternative stiffness parameters and you can directly input the value of G here and oidometer modulus is the value of K directly in my dust so right now you you, you know about the the linear elastic in my dust actually they have their a lot of model that they give you a lot of model in the program they have this one you know it already is elastic and also they have fresca they have more coulomb hook and brow hyper hyperbolic soft soil sexy pushy otter is a general s gray so in in my lecture i will extend to the next model actually i cannot cover all the model that provide in my dash can read in in the paper that published this model but this one is talking the other one is so called mohulam and in this one if you i also talk talking about the subsoil model about the hydrogen soil model is the where is the ubc sand and maybe no sand this one i will <coughs> try to cover this model in my lecture so the i have to say the other the, the other one that if every model they they have some feature that suitable for each type of soil but the concept of every model i think is quite the same because it's based on elastic and elastoplastic so i will go to the before i go to the advanced model I, I, actually in the last one model is more coulomb we're talking a little bit about drain and undrain in tdsnx for 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 undrain condition in tdsnx or drain condition you can set it here you they have the general tab you go to the porous tab you can set the drain parameters you can change between drain and undrain condition if you for drain condition it's no problem but for undrain condition i recommend to use this one you just change to be undrain effective stiffness and effective strength and i i I always use this one. It's the B coefficient of the of the skeleton about it for the default in my dash. It's about 0.97 for for default value is is upper one. Please change chip to be this one. And the B value is something like this. It's skeleton for professor parameter. Theoretically, if the soil is saturated 100 percent, B is equal to one. So when you would like to run the unrained case in my dust, I for for my point of view I always use this this one instead of use the Poisson ratio equal to 0.5 something like this. Actually, you can use both, but this, this one you maybe reasonable result from my dust. Mm. The elastic bullet of the soil is not only you can obtain from laboratory test you can get it from the field test <coughs> for example this one I, is referenced by the foundation is analyzed and decide book by both the if the soil is sand you can roughly estimate that the e is equal to 500 n is spt plus 15 or just can be this one 5000 square root n and you can obtain the value of the E by the result from cone penetration test or CBT by ES is equal to 2 to 4 UU or if you have the crazy set you can change to be the other equation and obtain from SPT and can obtain the result from cone also and also if you are result is clear you can calculate by es is equal to 3 to 8 qc so 
<coughs> so that means uh, let's say make the conclusion from this if you would like to use the elastic model for this one you can calculate e from this table and you assume your Poisson ratio equal to as I mentioned before 0 0.3 it's not only this you can use the other correlation it's not from this textbook actually they have a lot of empirical correlation is suitable for the soil of your country or your region the next part if you go to <coughs> elastoplastic model or moculum so it's not same as the elastic model because if you try to, to model that your soil is linear elastic suction curve will go something like this but in reality that when the stress reach some certain level it should be something like this should be flat or if reach one certain level is new it will it's not only the e e e elastic strain they have they will have this part is so called plastic strain okay let's go something like this and <coughs> when you coming to some certain point some certain strain and you unload it you come back here you become elastic again <coughs> so Mohulam is something like this so it, this, this model is that when the thread reach some certain value they will create you and the the strain will activate and they will have the plastic strain occur in your model and you can unload back to elastic again so how can you specify the U? U is not same as you have the concrete or you have the steel U of the soil composed of several components something like this <coughs> they have sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 the, this model they I have to say they borrow they borrow the, the more coulomb failure criteria actually the, the more coulomb is not tell where is the u points of the of the soil it's tell <coughs> it's tell us where is the failure but this idea they they just borrow the idea of the failure and just assume that the yield stress of the soil <coughs> is follow the more coulomb failure criteria for example <coughs> if we start it here we have the more circle it's a more circle, something like that, just mean soil is not fair. But if we increase the sigma 1 up to this, it's shape to be the blue one, <coughs> sigma 1 up to this point, and the more circle it touch this line, the soil is, that mean if you're writing some code that you you said if the more circle here it touch the this line the soil is you if the soil is you the strain composed of two components equal to elastic strain plus the plastic strain so that means if it you <coughs> it will create the plastic strain <coughs> so that means if you would like to use the Coulomb model you have to input the value is first part is elastic is the E and post ratio is elastic and uh, and the other part is plastic you input the value is to specify where is the U location is cohesion and friction angle cohesion is something around here is the cohesion and friction angle the U stress in 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 in, in Marco law model if we plot in 3d stress space is something like this so that means firstly if your stress state is inside this surface your soil behavior is elastic behavior if this stress state it move maybe move something like this and touch the surface it's become plastic or if it unload or come back to be the green one 
it can be elastic again. <coughs> so the yield surface of the moculum is some kind of a bounding surface that means it cannot expand or can, cannot enlarge. If we go to the MEDA software, you just they have to tap so it's so called to the tap. Firstly you start with elastic modulus. Here yeah. five fifty thousand you adding the value of Poisson ratio, adding the unit weight. If you would like to use the ball coulomb, you say you, you select the model to be more coulomb. Here Okay, if you, if you use the Markulum, they have cohesion. This one, they use cohesion is about 30. And this one, friction, ang friction angle is about 36. And in <coughs> my dash, they have the other parameter, is so called the latency angle. For default, my dash will set the friction angle is equal to the, the, the latency angle is, is equal to. But in the practical point of view, I will not set. I will not set this value to equal to the friction angle. So you can see it here. This one is the result from the soil test. It's more coulomb, as you see upper one. If I set the latency angle <coughs> equal to zero, this one is forcing the stress and strain. And this one is volumetric strain, and this one is distortional strain. It's, it's because to zero, the soil will go up, 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 up. If, if this one go up, that means your sample is contraction. It's contract, that means it's compressed. When it touch the <coughs> yield function, in Markulum, is something like this. It's flat because the dynamic angle is equal to zero. On the other way, if you set the other the the dynamic angle equal to thirty, when it you it become like this, is dilate. So that means the behavior of <coughs> volumetric strain or changing of the volume is dependent much on this parameter. So. Maybe you have the question, but what what is going on if I set to be 30, if I set to be zero? <coughs> Actually, they have the one paper by Professor Potts. It's the, in, it's a rank lecture in 2003, it's a long time ago. It's the topic is numerical analysis, virtual dream or practical reality. He, he showed something like this. He have the shallow foundation. And he vary the value of the latency angle. Like that. He vary this, this one like that. And he found that if he increased the latency angle to be 25, the result is higher than the latency angle equal to zero. Is, is something around here. So that means if you increase the dynamic angle, the stiffness of or the deformation of your uh, your analysis result will be decreased. But if you reduce the value of the dynamic angle or to be zero or reduce the deformation of your finite element analysis is reduced. So <coughs> it might be the question that what should I input? <coughs> if you don't have any strike cell test to 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 calibrate where is the value of this dry cell angle in the my practical point of view, I will I always use this one equal to <coughs> zero to have the safe side. But if you have the verification or you have the result from dry cell test, you can use this one to be some certain value. So that means you should be careful because my dash always says that dilatancy angle equal to 
fee. In in my idea, I think it's too high, so you have to check. But if you don't have any verified result, you just assume at this one equal to zero as I mentioned before. For the last previous part, I'm talking about what is the concept of inelastic and moculum. So, so, so if you would like to calibrate model, what to, to see whether your 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 consciousness model can simulate the variable soil or not, in DDS and X they provide the feature so called soil test. Actually, the like is really much because it's flexible. It's quite flexible. You can do everything as you like. It can simulate different kind of tests in soil. Actually, this 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 this, this soil test is is just high a little bit. You just click this one static and slope analysis here. The soil test is around here. Just click it. And you when when you click it is appear something like this. Inside this, they 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 they, they have the so called the, the the test type. You can you can perform so many tests in your computer. Maybe you can test for oidometer, can test for dry axial, and so on. And you can change your material model in your side test. You can see it here. You, in 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 soil test, you can add some so-called initial stress to your soil, and after that, you can run it. The soil test. Okay, the soil test. Right now, you open the soil test and you just click the new. Okay, the project will come out. You input the project title, maybe just quantity model and just okay. Okay, the unit system is the one I want. And you go to material, just create isotropic material. This one should Morculum as I mentioned before. Okay, Morculum. And yes it will last they have the default setting for the Midas. Go to porous. Okay, you can see now we're setting the the, the porous to be drain condition. It have the undrain effective thread also, as mentioned before. Okay, but right now I think I change this one to be drain. Okay, so we go to nonlinear. We can provide the location of the U. Surface, the equation, the dynamic angle. You can specify what number that you want. I set to be ten. After that, I apply. Okay, it's double and delete it. And we go to the side side test. Is something like this. Okay, it's side test. Have the triaxial test name is okay they have several kind of testing you can change to be isotropic material that I input the soil parameter before add here is a soil test analysis you can it's quite straightforward you can get the result of the stress and curve you can use this one and calibrate with your laboratory testing and you can you can Cut or you can copy the result and can paste in Excel and they can plot it together. You can change this one to be oidometer also. And modify. Okay, and I forgot something. You have to input some initial stress for oidometer and have to add in the material type. Okay, and add to be oidometer. Test the lead oidometer test. Sorry, test number two. And finally, you can get the result from oidometer. You can see it's quite easy to get the stress and curve in GTS 10X. The next part, I will talking about advanced model instead of we talking about 
in elastic already we talking about more cool already so we go to the more advanced model that gts and s provide it for you i will not go deep into mathematics you, if if you like to see the in equation in mathematics you can see the user manual of the gts and s but today i will talking only some graphical or tell you to understand what is the behavior of each model so for first first one i will talking about one model the the u function of or u surface of each model actually is it, it is more coulomb is the one line but in some model you can make it maybe as some surface surface with some certain equation what shape that you want actually different model they have different shape it depends on the 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 researcher that present the behavior of the soil so if the soil state state, state, state of the soil is in the red one it's become elastic and if i increase the soil it move something like this to touch it here it's become plastic if the u function is not moving maybe it just cannot move a fix is so that means when they when the stress reach this one is become perfectly plastic become like this and when i unload it become elastic again but in some case or in some model they add the feature is so called hardening feature what is the hardening feature that they allow the new function can be expanded so that means when the u function touch the state state it touch the u surface the u surface can be enlarged okay it can be enlarged something like this if the u function is enlarged so what's going on to the stress and curve if the, the stress and curve can be go up according to hardening of you okay so so the u function is in 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 hardening feature it's not only the soil can be hard it can can be softening also when it touch the u function you can provide some of the function here the u can be shrink it or shorten this one so called softening is something like this this one is the how can we specify u function no no don't need to so serious it's really the mathematics it's really the equation you can have your own model also if you would like to have it and the other one is, is that in in if you read some of the the manual in gts nx is so called plastic potential function what is a plastic potential function is that is is the it is the equation or surface also same as a u function some model is the same some model is not the same so when it touch this new function it will tell you that if something like this the vector will okay perpendicular to this plastic potential and volumetric strain in this way and shear strain in the other way the volumetric strain if in this way is become plus that means contraction if in the other way it become contract also on the other hand if your stress state go somewhere else, it touch it here This one, epsilon s or shear strain is positive, and volumetric strain here is minus here. So that means your soil is dilation. Dilation does mean your soil is volumetric is expand. So first, 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 first model that I will talk. I will discuss for you today is so-called soft soil model.
soft soil model firstly they just invent to simulate the subgrade is based on the 1D compression curve of the subgrade what is subgrade here if you have 1D compression in consolidation test the stress that we move move until it you out here if it you move somewhere around here so that means when it touches the U, they, they, they can still have increments. You can see it here. When it touches the U, they have some increment of the stress. So it can increase. So that means this model should have some portion of hardening portion. The subsoil model, we have two U function. The form of Coulomb, we have only one. The first one is so called fixed U function. Fixed U function, we I said that we borrow from more Coulomb is same as more Coulomb and it's fixed it cannot move and we have the other one so called cap cap is around here cap you touch the cap it can be expand when we to test the soil in consolidation test the spread part will move in this way if it move in this way so that means your model should be have the if you like to simulate this phenomenon you should have the hardening feature and your, your u function should expand here it touch the u and the u function expand so the the result from the test result is something like this if you have the stress state is here, it go into this way. Firstly, if you touch the first U, this one elastic. Touch the first U, the first U will be expand, something like this. And finally, it go to touch here. Touch the fixed one. If touch the fixed U, that means your stress cannot increase anymore. So if you become perfectly plastic. This one is the soft soil model. So the soft soil model that I tell you before that the parameter is come from the is the invent this model that try to simulate the concentration test in one dimensional. So the parameter is from come from C C here come from Kappa come from C S And the three component here is for more Coulomb. It's the cohesion. I think you know it already. It's friction angle and tensile angle. This is this one is the the parameter for soft soil model. And in my das, they require to input the K naught consolidation and OCR and alpha. This one is too detailed. I will not talking about this one. So. You go to the next one, the so called hardening soil model. So, what is the hardening soil model? The, the, the inventor of this model they add the other feature into the model. Instead of the U1 can be expanded, they add the U2. U2 is the, the yellow one, it can be expanded also. It can be expand, it can be ex hardening <coughs> until it touch the bounding surface. They cannot go beyond the, the, the bounding surface. So th that means in this model they can simulate the triaxial test compression is quite well because the straight part for triaxial test is something like this. Go a little bit up. When it go little, when it go up, that means your U will be move around the spread part and expand until it reach the bounding surface, and it stop. This one hardening soil model. <coughs> the parameter for hardening soil model, you have to input the stiffness of the soil. E I is the initial stress. E fifty here and E U R is the unloading. The behavior of of the hardening soil model is something like this. <coughs> it can go it's around here and this one. 
จำคายแล้ว flat have input the set of modulus and they have the other parameter is the phase ratio and and so on is the exponent exponent parameter if you like to know that th this model is suitable to your soil or not you have to calibrate with the soil test that I mentioned to you before and it's not only the can simulate of the expansion of 2U in subsoil model they increase the so called small strain parameters to simulate this one also and the next one is the model that they invent for for sand is the UBC sand is actually UBC stand for it's not unified building code it's the form University of British Columbia is the PhD thesis they propose this model I think it's about 10 years ago and right now it's quite popular because it's quite easy to understand in, in UBC sand the first one you have to cap you here and the cap you and the U function is same as the hardening soil model it can move up by hardening and and they can set that if the if the U function is lower than the blue line is so called constant volume lower than blue line the soil will become contractive contractive that means it's compressed if the this line is higher than the blue line the soil become dilative or expand so that means you have to input the value of the free CV but it's free CV is the free that govern the constant volume of this one for UBC sand you have to <coughs> input the elastic part friction angle the constant volume free or free CV is the line that govern that the soil should be contraction or dilation is the cohesion and this one is the exponent value and also you can specify that your soil should have cap or not cap in this one you can enable or disable cap if you don't, don't like to have the cap you can disable it and the, res the result is, is of the UBC sand if you like to simulate the behavior of dry cell test is performed really well and you can see it's really beautiful you can see that curve and a little bit hardening and can have some contraction and it's become dilation it become dilation when the the stress state is more than the constant volume line here if if, if, if if the stress state or shear stress is more than this line it's become dilated something like that so maybe you should have some you have some question that how can I calibrate this one I have to stress from a tell you that you should be calibrated with the test result after we talking about the simple model and intermediate mo difficult model that's a small coulomb and advanced model we go to the case study the case study that I would like to simulate the river wall is here and the river wall is the stability of river wall is improved by using the deep mixing the mix the cement to create a pile or cement column to increase the stability so the after finish this wall is something like this composed of sheet pipe and this one has the element on top and this one has the cement column it's around here the the objective of this 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 is wall they would like to make the route for both as a transportation so they excavate or dragging the water bed here this one they remove after they remove they might have some deformation so they have they plan to improve the stability by adding the soil cement column the typical the the the, the, the top view of this is composed of a lot of soil cement column around here soil cement column and at the facing of this wall they have the sheet pile
has a sheet pile, sheet pile to as the riverbank protection and and the designer intended to reduce the tension crack occur on the side cement column. It's something like that and this one for we install the inclinometer at the front face of the deep, deep mixing. Firstly, I try to simulate the 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 deep mixing or soil cement. So I have the result from CAU test is the drag cell test and try to simulate with this different kind of model. The blue one is more coulomb. More coulomb is something like this. Go up to one point and flat. And also use the hardening soil model is the yellow one. And use the hardening soil model sorry is the the green one. Uh, and UBC model is the yellow one. This one is reserved for Q and S. -S. And if you would like to yeah, would like to simulate the spread part, you can see that the result from UBC sand model is is not quite good. It's always go spread because this one has the cohesion and also they have the result from hardening soil model. Even change the parameters can go up. But for the more coulomb, this one is simulating is quite well. Go into this and that one. Right, so according to the stress strain relationship or state part, you can see the more coulomb outperform the parameter, the, the other soil model. The more coulomb is the winner. I raised this case that to, to show you that maybe somehow it's not it's no need to use the complicated model. Maybe some case is the more coulomb is good. That's is good to fit if we give the satisfactory result. And this one you can see for the drive sales here, the more coulomb is the best model to simulate the behavior of drive cell. So if we this one actually I get this stress and curve by using the soil test. So I try to simulate the, the 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 behavior of this wall by using my dust in 3D in one 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 strip. And firstly, I, I try to use my dust I, quite impressive because it's really fast model. It's really, even you run in 3D, spend really short time to convert. And the result is something like this. You can see it here. They have the field measurement in the red one. The best one of the soil simulation is Moculum. It's quite good compared to Hanning soil model and UBC soil model. That means the prediction is lower than the actual one. So, for conclusion of this case that the they can conclude that if you calibrate the soil model, calibrate will calibrate with the laboratory result it seems to be it can fit the field measurement as well so the conclusion of my presentation today I give a lecture about fund fundamental or consistive model what is a consistive model what is the elastic model and talking about soil test in GTS and X how can we use it and show some flexibility and it's really useful to the, the engineer to use for calibrate the stress and curve before the, you use it and also talking about advanced soil model what is the concept of hardening soil model soft soil model UBC sand model and the final presentation is about the case study so we can make the conclusion that if you have sufficient results of the lab and you calibrate it the you you can simulate the, the or predict the actual view behavior as well. Thank you for attending my presentation.